Hey, I'm Chris Troy, host of St. Clair County Recess, Moment in History, and I'm downtown in Port Huron in the path of what was one of the largest, most devastating tornadoes to hit St. Clair County. Now on May 21st, 1953, at roughly 4.30 in the afternoon, what was a hot, humid day turned into what I'm sure was an apocalyptic event for many of those who lived through it. For at 4.30, winds reaching up to 90 miles an hour gathered to form a tornado that touched down in Smith Creek. It moved steadily towards east-northeast at 35 miles an hour, where it devastated the southern edge of Port Huron, resulting in F3, F4 damage. An F4 tornado has been reported to produce up to 250 mile an hour winds, which is no surprise to people such as Orville Swick, who survived it. Now, Orville was working at the Port Huron Detroit Roundhouse when the twister came up through Griswold, ripping the roof off of the roundhouse. His wife, looking for a place for shelter, hid in the car. But as the tornado blew through, it lifted the car and carried it almost two blocks with her inside. Fortunately, she survived. As the storm blew through Port Huron, buildings were pummeled into rubble and trees were reduced to splinters. But the tornado of 1953 was not finished when it came to the St. Clair River. Before crossing the river into Canada, the thunderstorm that led the twister dumped heavy amounts of rain and golf ball sized hail onto the city of Sarnia. Now this event was credited for reducing the amount of injuries by clearing the streets of motorists and pedestrians. By 5.45 p.m., however, the tornado roared into Canada just south of the Sarnia Harbor, where it intensified further and grew in size to 980 yards wide. Moving to the northeast, the tornado passed directly through the downtown area and nearly 100 commercial buildings sustained damage. A four-floor hotel on the waterfront lost many of its upper floors, as did a furniture store on Christina Street. The auditorium of the Imperial Theater also completely collapsed. At least 150 homes in the suburban outskirts of the city were damaged, in some instances reduced completely to rubble. Before exiting Sarnia, the tornado curved even further to the northeast and began to weaken as its path narrowed to approximately 33 yards across. Radio station CHOK was severely damaged by the tornado. Launched at 97.5 megahertz in the 1940s, the station was never rebuilt following the devastation of the tornado. CHOK was credited for staying on through the entire storm, continuously warning both Sarnia and Port Huron residents. For Moment in History Extra, hey, I'm Chris Troy, reminding you all that history lives in all of us.